So you have a really cool statically generated blog with 11T or Gatsby or maybe something custom with Next.js or Nux.js with some markdown type library. But even with all that, it is a pain to blog in markdown. Uh, where's my blog again? All right, dev. And then I think it's under my name, my, uh, what is it? Okay, there it is. And then, and then, and then, 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 is it yarn dev to start? Oh, I don't, oh, this is a Jekyll blog. I need to run Jekyll serve, I think. Oh, are the dependencies installed? Oh, Jekyll's not installed. I, uh, we just want to blog. I can go into Notion and quickly open up a blog post and write in Markdown and even add images without having to do the song and dance of uploading to a host like Cloudinary and remembering how to actually render an image in Markdown, which requires a Google search almost every single time. Heck, you can even choose an image from Unsplash if you're really lazy. It's amazing. But how do we get this content from Notion into our statically generated site and ideally without paying a lot of money? Well, I've got just the thing for you. I made a pipe dream workflow that will connect your Notion blog to your front end actual statically rendered site hosted on GitHub. You can just take the link below and then paste it into your web browser to create a new pipe dream account and then use this workflow to connect Notion to your blog. Now for my case, I like to use Jekyll. It's my personal blog is still on Jekyll, but this will still work with Gatsby and et cetera with a little bit of tweaks. So let's copy the workflow into my account and we can see it creates this whole workflow that I've already done all of the work for you. You just have to connect your Notion account and a couple of configuration items. So we got to select our Notion account. I've already have mine connected, but it's as simple as doing a little OAuth. I would set this once a day to check in for new blog posts, but you can, if you blog more often, you can change this obviously. And the page ID is the page where you're going to host post to be published. So under my workspace, for example, I have a blog workspace and I have drafts and posts to be published. So I wanna configure this workflow to only listen to new pages in the post to be published area and then post those to Vercel. I don't want them to do, I don't want this workflow to catch my drafts. I'm not finished yet. So I'm looking for this post to be published in the dropdown and then we'll say new posts to be published from Notion and we'll create the source. Under the hood, Pipedream will ask Notion once a day to see if there's any new or new changes to this page. All right, we have a test event to work with and we'll go down to the configuration area after selecting this event. This, this, is, this is the root page, so to speak, of post to be published to our blog. Under the configuration, this is where we're gonna do most of the work. This all depends on your statically generated blog on GitHub. You can put in your own GitHub name here, your account name where the blog is hosted. So I'll put in my name and we'll put in my repository. Now, just a note, this will work with private blogs as well. It doesn't need to be publicly hosted repository. And then we need to make a, a PR title. So we'll just say new notion post to be published or something like that. The base branch is where your main branch is that's deploying. So I'll say master is my main branch here. And then the feature branch, you can name it whatever you'd like. This is what new posts are going to be committed to. It won't be direct to master. It will create a new pull request and then you can merge it on your own time. So we'll say the feature branch is a uh, new notion blog post. We'll test this. All this is doing is setting a configuration for downstream steps to use. It's just kind of returning them here in the step exports. Then we'll need to once again, connect our account and select the page ID of the post to be published. It's a little redundant, but this is necessary because there's more information downstream that we'll need to use. And this will get the newest blog post from the published post page ID. Now down here in the page, we can see the ID. We'll select this. So there's two results here. There should be a block of a paragraph and a block of another paragraph. We have no pages here yet inside of this post to be published. So let's go ahead and move my draft into this post to be published page. So now this blog post I wrote is ready to be actually published and we'll run this again. 
just so that we have some real data to work with. This time we should see a new block that's called a page, child page. Yep, so this is our child page. Now that we've put our page to be published in the correct spot, we can now use this special page to markdown uh, step that will actually take the Notion API response and convert the whole post into markdown which is pretty cool because that way we don't have to rewrite it in Markdown. It just converts it for us automatically, including the URLs to the images that you use in the Notion editor. <laughs> Saves you a ton of time. Now, the next step is to maybe create a branch. So what you need to do is connect your GitHub account. And all this code does is it sees if a branch exists with the name you defined up in the configuration section. So under the results here, you'll see that you defined, I defined a branch called new notion blog post, and that's where new blog posts will be committed to. This will potentially create that branch if it doesn't exist already in your repo. And then it will, so we, we test this. It could or could not create the branch. Here it says that the, the branch already exists. Then we'll go down here and add our GitHub account. And here is the path where the post exists. So I'm using uh, I'm using Jekyll, and in Jekyll, posts exist under this underscore post directory. So the the path would be underscore posts, and then it would be the the format Jekyll expects is this date, the year, month, day, and then the title separated by hyphens. So I went ahead and I. I actually have a step here that will format the today's date or the date of when the um, post was created. So we'll select that path to get the date, and then I'll do a hyphen here, and then the title should be available under that special markdown conversion uh, area we did. So here's the return value, and here's the title. So what we want to do is select this path. You notice how there are spaces between. So what we'll do is we'll actually. Uh, We'll do this to, to lowercase, which will put all the letters to lowercase. We'll split it on spaces, and then we'll join it again with commas, with hyphens, sorry. Easy peasy. So when we test this, hopefully we'll see a good title, or maybe I may introduce a bug here. Two lowercase is not a function. Oh, I'm silly. I forgot that the C in two lowercase is capitalized. That probably is the issue. So taking the title extracted from the Notion post, lowercasing the whole thing, splitting on spaces, and then rejoining on hyphens. And that should have created a brand new file on that branch. Pretty cool. And the title, we can find out in the next step. This will actually create a pull request on a repository with this brand new branch that includes our new Notion generated post. And we will test this out. Awesome, so it finished and we can, you can see that the API response returns this HTML URL to our brand new pull request. We'll just copy that value and then we'll paste it into our browser and we could see our blog post has been created with the correct format. I may need to play around with this uh, special characters like periods, but ta-da, we have a huge blog post that would have been a pain to write in my local machine with a local server running, and instead I can just use Notion as a staging area to publish my blog posts. I hope this was useful. Have a great day.